the geospatial revolution. In a world where everybody's texting, geospatial technology is critical to understanding what's happening at a particular location. It's the speed of the internet. It's the capability of remote sensing satellites. It's software like Google Earth. Taken all together, you have an explosion in the way we view the Earth. The threats that we face don't recognize boundaries, whether those are physical boundaries or organizational boundaries or agency boundaries. And every time we're inhibited in our response to those threats by our own boundaries, we've lessened our impact. And when we lessen our impact, we lessen our services to those decision makers and we ultimately affect our national security in a negative way. The consequence to the nation if we don't integrate intelligence, I believe, is simply that we will miss things. Uh, we won't uh, deliver the best possible solution set to our mission partners, whether that's the policymaker, the warfighter, or the first responder. This type of warfare today, the, the types of threats that we face require rapid simulation of information, rapid understanding and situation awareness, rapid decision. So if without integrated intelligence, it's like fighting with both hands tied behind your back, blindfold over your eyes. It's, it's uncertainty, it's poor decisions, it's delayed decisions, it's loss of opportunity, it's loss of momentum. So the way you are m most likely to recognize the content, the substance, the early warning, the value of information is if you integrate it in the most comprehensive way. And that means that you understand sensors and capabilities, you understand collection, you understand the question, you understand the needs, potential threats, and you're putting that in information together in a way that the, the sum is significantly larger, more valuable, more useful than the individual parts. If you look at a place like Afghanistan and you don't understand those tribal connections, you don't understand what crops are grown where, if you don't understand how people get products to market, how they communicate, who interfaces with who, then you can't possibly understand the complexities of an insurgency that grows from that. We needed to know where we could go in. And so we used geospatial technology to prepare the area with information before we even got there. Approximately two-thirds of the cell towers stayed active. And aid workers and Haitian nationals were posting information saying that they needed help. I was watching CNN and immediately called our Ushahidi tech lead in Atlanta. I told him that we really needed to move and set up a new Shahidi platform for Haiti. Ushahidi is an open source platform for crowdsourcing crisis information. Basically that means you are following local media, Twitter, Facebook, text messages, any source of information you can get. Once you aggregate this information, you map it. You have a real-time picture of the actual situation on the ground. This information can be used by rescue workers or anyone. With the new Shahidi platform, you can decide what kind of map you want to use. OpenStreetMap uses crowdsourcing to do street mapping. And within a few days, OpenStreetMap had the most detailed map of Haiti that was available. There were maps of Haiti before the earthquake but they just weren't up to date anymore. So people started using donated satellite imagery to trace an open street map, collapsed buildings, clinics, hospitals. Within a week or so, we had trained over 100 individuals at Tufts University to map the incidents and the alerts. And then a, a text number 4636 was set up for reporting. But these text messages were all going to be in Creole. So we started getting as many Creole speaking volunteers as possible. I found out about the 4636 effort through a friend of mine. So I got online, started getting involved, basically staying up late after putting the kids to bed, tried to translate as many text messages as I could. Our top priority is for Prince. It's good, it's got translations. There was this energy. Today's. Mass. People from basically all over the world created sort of like support system over the internet. 
a soccer stadium was serving as a camp for displaced persons. But we didn't know it was there. Through Yushihidi's mapping ability, we knew that that would be a location to take aid. We wouldn't have seen it without them. Yushahidi alerted the world that if you've got needs in Haiti, or you're trapped in a building, or you're out of food, or you're injured and you need help, that you can alert us. Whether you are that person in Des Moines, Iowa, who's reading Twitter or Facebook, or you're a Haitian on the ground, with mobile technology and open sourcing information, you're suddenly empowered. I want by California. Being able to stay online, translating those text messages, you know that that information will be forwarded directly to a specific aid organization. That made it feel like almost I was on the ground uh, helping. huge opportunities with the advent of cloud computing and the great advances in IT. If we don't take advantage of it and move smartly together, uh, we'll find ourselves more disconnected. I think we have to pay attention to that. It is about an attitude, it is about an approach, it is about an enthusiasm, and it is about a commitment to satisfying that customer's core need, which again is increased confidence at their point of decision enhanced understanding when they need to act, reduced uncertainty when the trigger gets pulled. I don't believe collaborative integrated intelligence is an option. We must do this.